another wonderful Wednesday morning in the Golden Isles. It's a beautiful one today. We appreciate all of you spending your time this morning as you do once a month to celebrate entrepreneurship in our community. As you know, we think that by sharing the entrepreneurial stories of startups, small business owners, entrepreneurs, that we can spread that spirit throughout our region. And that's why we're all here today to support two startups who are getting going in our community. And with that, I'm very excited to present Paul with Island Insiders. How, how's the volume? Can you hear me? Yeah. Right. Uh, in full disclosure, when somebody this morning, so I have made notes, and I will do my best to stick to the script and try and get us out of here before the lunchtime rush. <laughs> when Andy invited me to talk about my new business to you today, she asked me to not only tell the what, but the how and the why. Absolutely, I said. What does that mean exactly? She said, well, tell us about your business, but also share with us the journey, the highs, the lows, the trials, the tribulations. Tell us your story. So here goes. Good morning. My name is Paul Morrison, and I am an entrepreneur. I am an entrepreneur 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I can't stop. There are times when I can push my urges to the furthest recesses of my mind, but eventually they resurface. I have a problem. When my wife Linda and I retired and moved to St. Simons permanently about two years ago, I reached out to her and shared my fears. I warned her that with all this time on my hands, something entrepreneurial was bound to happen. I promised I would try and fight it, but we should be prepared for the worst and we should have a plan, a pact between us. I told her the chances were high that I would eventually come to her with an idea. An idea so unique, so brilliant. My favorite book is Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. I've washed dishes in a restaurant. I have waited tables in a restaurant. I was not able to convince her that St. Simon's needed a made-to-order nitrogen ice cream stand. And apparently, an Indian curry restaurant was totally out of the question. But then it happened. I had the idea. And while it did involve restaurants, it did not involve me owning a restaurant, leaving the life savings intact. I was back in the game, and I was going into business. I started my first business back in the summer of 1974, at the tender age of 10. With my bicycle and a bucket, I went door to door washing cars in the posh neighborhoods. I remember, I remember buying a little red notebook from the corner store. I listed all my customers in the front and all my income and expenses in the back, not realizing that I'd just set up my first CRM and accounting system. <laughs> Since that time, I've had countless business ideas and actually converted some of them into going concerns. I tend to specialize in non-profits, not on purpose, they just turn out that way. <laughs> but it's my experience that more can be learned from failure than success, and I have learned a lot. I have learned that a good idea is just a beginning, and the beginning is the easy part. So not wishing to waste this latest golden nugget, I applied the five Morrison principles of entrepreneurship to assess its validity. Number one, are you passionate about the idea? A new business involves a lot of work and you need passion to pull you through. The idea involves restaurants, so check. Do you have the necessary skills? Well, this idea required three skills. Marketing, sales, and phone app development. Marketing. 
I've worked in advertising and promotions, so check. Sales. I've won sales awards with L'Oreal, Rothmans, Budweiser, so check. Phone app. I had absolutely no idea how to develop a phone app. I looked into having an app developed for me. Turns out it's very expensive and Linda was still being very protective of the life savings. Then I remembered my dad always used to tell me, son, if someone can do something, you can too. You just need to learn how. Now obviously he never played golf, but I do remember that when I was a kid we needed a garden shed. My dad went to the library, borrowed a book on shed building, and built a shed, which is still standing today. So I went onto the internet, went online, and found a course on app building. And I built my own app. Principle number three, can you ignore the naysayers? Well, I was a British cop in London for six years, so I'm used to people saying bad things to me. But actually, it turned out the biggest naysayer was me. I would wake up some mornings and I would what if myself to death. I would convince myself that this idea was terrible and would never work. Enter Andy. She would tell me that this was perfectly normal entrepreneurial behavior and that, she, that all I had to do was push through it. She would put me back on track. The woman is a genius and a true inspiration. Principle number four, is there a need for the product and does your product best fit the need? Well, I've now had enough people answer yes to both those questions that I believe it's a winner. Which brings us to principle number five, which states, if you have got this far, now apply the Nike principle. Just do it. Over the years, I have learned that while perfection is a noble goal, it is an unreasonable expectation. I have learned that analysis paralysis is a thing. And I have learned that good enough today will always produce better results than perfect that never comes. So I'm currently out there just doing it, talking to anybody that will listen and turning my idea into a reality one presentation at a time. My business is called Island Insiders. It's a collaboration between local business and local residents, supporting one another in a win-win relationship. In school, I attended a lecture on mutualistic symbiotic relationships in the world of nature. And since then, I have lived my life with one simple mantra, avoid lectures with long titles. No, seriously. <laughs> no, my mantra is find the win-win. I truly believe that Island Insiders is a win-win for both businesses and locals. In fact, when you consider that I'll be donating 10% of all proceeds to local charities, it's actually a win-win-win situation. The idea for Island Insiders came to me while Linda and I were entertaining some out-of-town guests, a regular occurrence since we moved here. The day before, we had taken them on a kayak tour, our third that summer, and we had waited two hours for a table to take them to one of our favorite restaurants. That day, in between eating out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we were gonna rent bikes, play golf, and go on a sunset cruise. Again, talk about supporting local business. Occasionally, Linda and I had been lucky enough to be recognized by a local business owner and given a discount or a complimentary cocktail as a thank you for our support. Island Insiders, is a way to identify local residents to business owners and extend the thank yous. Local residents pay a monthly subscription to become Island Insiders. They receive a phone app, a weekly newsletter, and access to a private Facebook group. For a business, there is no charge to join Island Insiders. They simply offer a unique thank you. This can take the form of a discount, extended happy hour, or some other special. In return, the business receives a detailed listing on the phone app, and they're featured in the weekly newsletter. The thank you can be changed weekly and is instantly communicated to loyal local customers. Also, the business can use the Facebook page to announce, to announce additional short-term deals in real time. 
something like We're Quiet Tonight, we're offering a free bottle of wine with dinner for Island Insiders. Island Insiders is not just for restaurants. The directory is divided into four categories. Food and beverage, accommodation, retail, and activities. The app also includes a digital membership card and an occupancy meter powered by local hotels so we can predict how busy our area will be. The newsletter will be delivered weekly via email and feature news and events as well as local band listings and the full business directory. The Facebook group will differentiate itself from others out there by not allowing any political comments of any kind. A safe space to discuss Golden Isles living with friends and receive great last minute deals from local businesses. A soft launch is planned for later this month with approximately 20 St. Simons businesses and 40 local guinea pigs who are going to try and break my app. Once everything is running smoothly, I will add more businesses from all around the Golden Isles and open the app to regular subscribers. So here are my challenges and where I could use some help. I'm only one person. It's very time consuming tracking down decision makers. I have not yet heard the owner is not interested right now. But I've lost count of the number of times I've heard the owner is not here right now. If you're willing to help and you have a relationship with a local business owner, please tell them about Island Insiders and have them contact me. Even if all you can remember is advertising and free, that should be enough to get their interest and I can fill in the blanks. I have a dedicated cell phone, landline, and email, and I'll meet anyone, anywhere, anytime. No such thing as office hours. Talking of hours, if any of you are involved in a business after hours or a group business setting that I could attend, present to, or just supply marketing materials, please reach out. Once I go live, I will need subscribers. I have a waiting list on the website at joinislandinsiders.com. On launch day, I'll send out an email link to download the app. The monthly subscription is $19.99 a month, and everyone on the waiting list will get the first month free. So please sign up and tell your friends. Island Insider memberships can be purchased in bulk at a discounted price to be used as a member benefit for clubs or as an employee benefit for companies. And I'm also planning to work with nonprofits and schools to use Island Insiders as a fundraising tool. So please reach out to me if you need details. So Andy, that is my business, my journey, and my story so far. I'll be happy to answer questions. All right, questions. First of all, the Dale Carnegie course on presentation paid off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. That was superb. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Questions. Questions. Who is the competitor? Um, possibly, if you have the local band card in your pocket, you're going to reach a fraction of the businesses that we'll be presenting to. Okay. Um, so we could consider them a, a competitor. Uh, but ideally, we'll be working with them. So. Okay. Okay. Questions, please. Okay. Is there a discounted annual membership price that you can pay versus the monthly? I love the way you're thinking. You already want to join for the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that will be implemented uh, once we get up and running. Uh, the way we can do it, it will actually credit you money you've already spent if you convert from a monthly to an annual. Uh, it can credit you. But we'll be starting off with just a single monthly. Yes? How would a business owner know that um, someone who has subscribed with Island Insiders has been to their business and spent money? That's a very good question. And I'm actually going to ask another question and answer that. So the question was, how does a business owner know that an island insider has gone in and used the business? First of all, to identify the business, there will be a window sticker on the door. The subscriber walks into the business, opens the app on the membership card page, and shows it to their server or whoever. 
that identifies them as an island insider. The business will have set up the island insider's deal on their pay system. So they will then be able to track how many times it has been used. Interestingly, I was talking to a restaurant owner yesterday and he said, well, obviously I'm going to need to track this to check that it works. And he said, well, hang on, it's not costing me any money. Why do I need to track it? <laughs> so, but yes, they will be able to track it by seeing how many times the special has been used. You, uh, you could have a weekly format that a realtor that rents houses could give to a tenant for a week as, as a benefit. Yeah, but then they wouldn't be a local, and that sort of defeats the purpose. Okay, okay, good. Uh, I appreciate the idea, but this is to look after locals who are supporting the businesses all year round, whether we have tourists on Go around or not. Question at the back. Um, I have two questions. One, are you looking for anybody to help you with this app, um, like, other than obviously whoever's helping you create the app? And then the second when I can afford to pay somebody, I will quite possibly take on employees. But at the moment, no, just me. Okay, and then uh, for fundraising, you talked about uh, being involved in schools. Um, so I work at Coastal Planet Technical College, and I know that they have a lot of fundraisers, job fairs, things like that. Um, and the majority of these you know, students are locals, or their parents are. Um, how would you uh, kind of connect with them and, and use fundraising in that? So the, the, the basic, did everybody hear the question, how can we use this for fundraising? The, the basic framework is going to be whoever the schools sign up onto the app, we will give them the full amount of the first month subscription. We will then give them 25% of that subscription for life. If the school, the school kid, the person approaches somebody who is already on the app, they can be converted to a school person app, and we will still pay the money. Does that, does that make sense? Uh, yes, sir. So what's the ROI on this for the customer? The, the question was, what is the, what is the return on investment for the customer, for the subscriber? Well, looking at the deals that, that we've organized so far, I would estimate you would not need to take advantage of this more than twice a month to get your subscription back. And I reckon if you have guests come stay with you for the weekend, you could save hundreds. Yes, sir, at the front. Living on the island and eating out a lot, it's, it's, it's tough getting in a lot of the restaurants, especially during the summertime. Is there any way to get a preferred seating opportunity for island insiders in the, any of those restaurants? You are a man after my own heart. I am talking to restaurants, and this is what I am proposing. We've all been to the airport. You have the first class check-in line, you have the economy check-in line. If there's nobody in first class, that attendant will take the economy line all day long. But as soon as a first class passenger walks up the line, they're next. I am proposing to our local residents that do not residents, restaurants that do not take reservations, that they run two waiting lists. One for tourists, one for island insiders. And they basically alternate between the two lists. Restaurant owners are saying, yes, we'd love to do that, but we don't want, don't want to upset anybody. So at the moment, we're working out ways where we can implement that system without making it obvious to people that have been in line for 20 minutes that you have not been in line for 20 minutes. So yes, it is definitely in the works and definitely something that we want to do. Yes? So your biggest competition may be indecision on the part of a restaurant owner. So how do you, how do you make that close? It, it, you know, it really isn't indecision. It's, it's getting to sit down with them. Um, but, but how do you get over that? Because if I'm a food and bev guy, I might have two sides, I might not have been two. I mean, food and bev, as you know, is a little bit irregular at times. Yes. How do you get over that hurdle? Because without them, this thing doesn't really go anywhere. 
Correct, which is why it's so time consuming. I mean, I, on average, I will go back to a restaurant five or six times before I can actually get to sit down and have a discussion with the business owner. Could wholesalers get you in the door better, faster? I, I, will, I will take advantage of any angle I can find. Uh, I've asked friends, you know, do you know the name of the guy? Do you, have you got a cell phone number? Um, any angle that can circumvent that, th that period uh, helps me. So yes, if, I, I, will, I will work with any suggestions. Um, during the break, we'll be handing around my business card, uh, also a, a card that has a QR code that links directly to the website. So uh, if any of you want to reach out to me, if you've got helpful information, please do send me an email, text, um, or, or use the contact page on the website. We'll, we'll pass those out. One more question, says Skip. Andy says no, no more questions. He's been up there long enough. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Ande. My name is Dana Roberts Beckham, and I am a native here of Brunswick. So, thank you, thank you. Um, my story goes back generations. I have been able to trace my roots back eight generations, and the ninth generation came from Senegal or Sierra Leone. So my story here is fascinating. I've been here 55 years. No way. Yes way. <laughs> 55 years, and I want to share my story with you. I am what they call, my family is made up of so many siblings. For instance, my grandfather and my grandmother, they had 14 children. However, and my mother was one of those 14 girls, seven girls and seven boys. My grandfather was married before he married my grandmother. So he was much older than my grandmother. But his first wife gave him eight sons. So when he married my grandmother, yep, the guy in the back like, what? <laughs> so well, before he married my grandmother, his first wife gave him eight boys, and she died in childbirth, giving birth to the last son. And then he met my little cute grandmother, and she gave him seven more sons and seven daughters. So they had 15 sons, 22 children all together. Now, mind you, my grandmother was just as, as old as his set of kids, because he was much older than my grandmother. But anyway, I came from one of those daughters, those daughters. And listen, in my family, you have a lot of stories. Most of them were on the Gullah Geechee Corridor, right here in Brunswick. Granddaddy did migrate from Liberty County, but he wasn't that far away. So the stories continued. As a child, I remember listening to the elders and listening to all these stories. So all these stories are bottled up inside of me. So I would tell them to my friends at Glen Academy. I cheered for Glen Academy. And they were like, oh, you, Carol, where you get that from? I'm like, this has really happened in my family. But I love the art of storytelling. So listen, I was talking to a young lady from Washington, D.C. years ago, and she said to me, she said, you know what? <clears throat> the way you tell stories, you have to share it. And I'm like, I thought I was sharing. She said, uh-uh, you got to take it to another level. So that's how I came up with Geechee Girls Tastings and, Tastings and Tours. So what I'm doing is offering a service to my community, sharing the stories of the culture and feeding you Geechee foods and giving you some beer and wine. So listen, <laughs> it's, it's going, um, this started happening 
bit by bit by bit when I was at the College of Coastal Georgia. And I started, I said to myself, well, I got all these stories, and I'm in the psychology department, and I'm taking up psychology. How do I fuse all this together? So then they offered um, community and community and organization and leadership. I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. I can make that happen. And so I studied that. But there is a great need to share all of these gorgeous stories. I started interviewing people, people who go way back. But the lady told me to share my story. She said, you a griot. I'm a what? A griot. It's a, it's a French word. It means storytelling, dance, G-R-I-O-T. So I happily embrace the fact that I am a griot. I tell stories. I tell folk tale stories. I tell real stories in the family. And we share. I take you on African American tours along St. Simons, Jekyll Island, and throughout Brunswick. One of the fascinating places that I've been able to take a group of people out of Atlanta was over on Jekyll Island to see the Wanderer, to tell the story of that, to eat afterwards. And the most fascinating part is when you get all these people who had no idea. So it's educational. I'm offering my services, this is services is to the Glenn County School System, College of Coastal Georgia, family reunions, um, um, husbands and wives. I had a couples retreat that I did at Eltworth by the Sea. Set it all up nicely. These people were fascinating because there is so much history here. And so if you can imagine me, this little lady, driving you on a shuttle bus, teaching you and telling these beautiful stories, lots of laughter, and going to these beautiful sites that a lot of people are so unaware of, yeah? And so what happens here is the school system is bypassing a lot of this history. Oh, it's fascinating thing. Really good stuff. So we want to offer that to the children, to the adults, the people in their families, to take part and to learn. I could tell you one day, I was out on St. Simons. Mm -hmm. I was on St. Simons, and I was down in the pier. And I was walking with my little boy, and just looking. And a couple stopped me. They were from Connecticut. I'll never forget, because I'm still in contact with them. A couple stopped me and they said, they asked me, where can I go find some good old gullah food? I was like, well, you can find it at my house. Because <laughs> I cook it. And I said, well, I, um, not unfortunately, there's not a restaurant over here that offers it. Because they've already researched the history, so they know that it existed at some point. So what I did for them, I said, I tell you what, his name was Mr. Bankham. I said, my name is Beckham, just like David Beckham, B-E-C-K-H-A-M. And he told me his name. And he said, listen, why don't you prepare us something to eat? Ooh, I said, OK. So I, did. <laughs> so I said, I cooked for them, prepared it, set it up very nicely. And they could also confirm that this is what you need to be doing. See, at first, I wasn't feeding the people. I was telling them the story. So now I've added on the Geechee cuisine, the gull of dishes. So um, they enjoyed the food. They enjoyed me sitting at the table with them, talking about the history, and just, just informing them on more things and lighting them on things that they didn't even know about. Southeast Georgia, St. Simons Island, Brunswick, Georgia, Jekyll Island, and a glimpse of Sapphalo Island as well. So that is what I'm offering. Geechee Girls Tastes and Tours coming at you. You're going to be seeing that big shuttle bus around town. And I want you to book your tours for your sororities, your fraternities, your families, your um, Georgia Bulldog Weekend, whatever you want to do.
I'm here for you. My name is Dana Roberts Beckham, just like David Beckham, okay? Good morning and again and thank you. Thank you, thank you. Any questions? You know what? Andy and I are working on that right now, okay? So any of that, you contact Andy, and I'm here for you, okay? All right? Yes, sir. Have you thought about uh, being on a podcast, if you had a podcast that would invite you to come mm -hmm. talk to the podcast? I would love that. Uh, I would love that. I would love that, sir. podcast in my head in the business school, but I'm not bringing that up. <laughs> I work at the College of Coastal Georgia, not Coastal Pines, my friend. So, <laughs> advertising. So, another question. Come on, I know it's one more out there. Lay right here. You know, when I did the package for the family that came down, the, the couples, I charged them at $45 a head. That wasn't including my food. Because when you eat my food, it's gonna, I'm, I'm going to feed you all you want to eat. So that's going to be a little bit more. But it's $45 a head for a tour of at least two sites. I can take you to two sites on $45. Okay. The tour lasts how long? The tour lasts about 45 minutes to an hour. Because I'm a talker. And I get to talking. And I get to walking. And I want you to feel it. I want you to have a real experience of it, OK? It's fantastic. Okay, thank you all. Have oh, one more, sir. No, we're not the, minimum number of people. the minimum number of people, great question. I can't take on no more than about 30 people. Okay, that's what I did. That's what I did for this little group of tours. Kids came down from Chicago. Well, they were in their own bus. So I met them over, I followed them, they followed me to, to Jekyll. So they were on their own bus. But when I think about children coming from school, like if I got all fifth graders, so it's going to be more kids. I have not gotten to that yet. But I did do about 32 people, young people from out of Chicago with Rainbow Bush Coalition. Yes, sir. Do you have a website, a Facebook page? I have, I have not, I do not have a Facebook page, but you can find me at uh, Friends of Historic Selden Park. And that is the website for right now. We're going to update that as well. Anything else? Another question. Okay. Have you thought about uh, you know coming to someone's house, cook there, tell your story, and then you feed the people that come? Absolutely. Absolutely. That? Because let me tell you, the couple from out of Connecticut, they absolutely love the food. They're coming back in July, and they're going to be bringing a three more couples, so that's two, four, six, eight, that'll be 10 people. So I would love to do that. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I would be glad to do that. You have a question in the back? So what are a couple of examples of this type of food? Okay, well, that's a very good question. Food that you may be already eating. For instance, a gullah, a gullah geechee, geechee dish will consist, consist of okra and tomato and rice Okra came from West Africa, rice they brought over. So I tell the story of that. You may have some sausage in it. You may have some shrimp and grits, which was a poor person's meal along the coast. And the fantastic thing about my grandparents, they never were hungry. They were not farmers, but they had access to the water. So the stories about how they went fishing and crabbing and shrimping and put it with some grits and how that all started. So some shrimp and grits and some good cornbread, pan cornbread, some hominy grits, it's all there for you, okay? Yes. How would I go about booking a uh, trip with you? Andy, you will contact Andy. <laughs> She's my go-to right now, okay? And you guys just contact her, I'm ready, okay? I'm ready. It's going to be a great summer. Give me a hand, y'all. <laughs> Thank you.